Hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my top 10 tanks and or camisoles for spring and summer knitting. My name is Amanda and this is my channel all about knitting, hand dyeing yarn, and all sorts of other fun crafty type things. Thank you so much for joining me today. There are a few places you can find me on the internet. They're going to pop up on the screen here, but they're always also linked down below in the description if you're interested in finding me on places like Instagram, Ko-Fi, Ravelry. All of that is available for you in the description, as well as every pattern that we're going to talk about today. I always do these pattern roundup videos as kind of a fun little knit and chat, so I am going to be knitting throughout this video. This is the tiniest little start on a collar, but this is going to be my opal sweater test knit for Ozetta. Uh, the yarn I'm using here is Biches and Boucher Le Petite Mohair. Uh, this colorway is dark blue green. And I'm holding it with Sauna from Wool Dreamers. They were so kind to provide all of this yarn for me, Wool Dreamers and Ozetta. Um, and what is this color, 1985? I had to look this up last time I talked about it too. I did get it right this time, it is 1985. So it's giving me this really pretty marled sort of look, which I'm quite pleased with. So anyways, I have tons to do on the collar for this. So I figured that was a perfect no looking type project for this video. But yeah, I won't keep you much longer. I just always like to explain why people sometimes see my hands moving really awkwardly, <laughs> uh, kind of out of frame because I don't knit all the way up here. But why they're doing that is because I'm knitting while we're talking. So yeah, I have 10 really fun tank patterns. One is also able to be knit as T. It has both options available in the pattern. I'm really excited to get into these and pulling all these patterns has really lit my fire for some summer knitting. I definitely want to cast on at least one of these tanks very soon. I'm probably going to be speaking very highly of them because I always only pick patterns for these videos that I would really really want to knit myself but there's definitely a few that have caught my eye and I maybe will be casting on soon. So we'll start with the Ellie Summer Top by Simone Ryan. This is a fingering weight racerback type garment. It calls for a gauge of 26 by 37 rows. So definitely a smaller gauge, but I think with the fact that this is pretty much just straightforward ribbing for most of the body, it's not going to take too long to knit because it's definitely one of those projects you could knit and not look at for most of it. When you're working on the top of it, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more attention, obviously, because there's some shaping and stuff going on. But once you get onto that body, it's going to be some really nice mindless ribbed knitting. This pattern comes in 13 sizes, which is pretty crazy. That's a lot of sizes, that's awesome. And you're looking at 26.75 inches to 55.5 inches in bust circumference. In centimeters, that is 68 to 141 centimeters bust circumference. Ease-wise, you're going to want anywhere from negative two to four inches or negative five to 10 centimeters of ease. So fit-wise, it's going to be a little bit more snug of a fit, more of that really cozy summer camisole that you layer under, maybe like a flowier, boxier type cardigan. But yeah, construction-wise, looking at the pattern here, it is worked from top to bottom. So you're going to knit the back of it first, then pick up stitches for your two front sections work all of that, shape the v-neck that the garment has, and then you're going to connect all of those pieces together at the underarm and work the whole body in the round. It has really beautiful I-cord edge finishes all around the whole garment, uh, around the v-neck in the front and the bottom hem, which finishes it off really nicely, I think. And then you also have this detail where the ribbing kind of flows through the v-neck and under the arms on both sides, so it follows the shape of that V through the underarm and up into the back. So I think that gives it a really classy, polished look as well. Overall, a really beautiful, simple tank, but something I think is going to look great on everyone, and there are so many size options that everyone is going to be able to knit this one. Of course, I have a knot in my mohair. <laughs> uh, how did this happen? And it's not one I can leave because it's coming up right into my, there we go, <laughs> all fixed. Yeah, I really love this Ellie Summer Top. I think it's a great staple for every knitter's wardrobe and Simone has some really beautiful patterns. There's actually another one that we're going to be talking about later on in this video, but I thought this one was a great place to start. Next we have the Slanting Slip-On by Anne Wenzel. 
This one is a little bit more conservative of a tank, I guess. It has a quite a high neck. It's going to sit kind of about here on you. The back is high as well. And then just a classic tank shape otherwise to it. This is knit out of DK weight with a gauge of 22 stitches by 35 rows to get your four inches of knitting. You're looking at nine sizes for this one, anywhere from 29.5 to 40 inches in the bust, or 75 to 104 centimeters. This one calls for a negative ease, about 13.5 inches or eight centimeters approximately of negative ease. And it's worked also from the top down. So you're going to cast on in the round for the collar, knit for a little while, and then eventually you split the front and back so that you can work the armholes and then reconnect it <laughs> to work in the round for the rest of the body. It has slanted line details that are made out of twisted knit stitches that kind of follow your shoulders down into the underarm. And then that also moves all the way down the side of the body as well. So it flows into the side of the body really nicely. And then in between those two slants, it slowly turns into this really pretty textured stripe-like pattern. And then that pattern follows down all the way through the rest of the body and finishes off with just a nice simple twisted one by one rib at the bottom. The texture on this one I think is really beautiful as well as how such simple stitches are used to create such a striking design on it. Again, another really pretty tank. I think that would be flattering on a lot of different people and a really fun knit. I think with all that's going on with the texture, even though it is pretty straightforward knitting, just knits and purls. I think you're still not going to get bored because there's so much going on. I think the shaping and the upper body is really fun. And then once you get to that texture pattern on the bottom of the body, I think it's going to be easily memorizable, but something that won't get boring at the same time either. It looks like the pattern repeat is at least six to eight rows. So you're always kind of doing something a little bit different and switching it up. Next we have the Shona Top by Irene Lin. I have really come to love Irene's patterns in the past year or so. I feel like they're really unique. The shaping on them is really beautiful. A lot of them are a more boxy size, but I think she finds really creative ways to use stitch patterns to make something that I just haven't seen before. But this one is also great because along with the tank version that's included, there's also a modification to add sleeves and turn this pattern into a tee. So this is knit out of DK white yarn. Your gauge is going to be 21 stitches by 28 rows and this pattern comes in eight different sizes. You're looking at anywhere from 39.75 inches to 60.75 inches in bust circumference. In centimeters that is about 101 to 154 centimeters. This pattern does call for positive ease. You're looking at about 6 to 9.75 inches or in centimeters that's about 15 to 25 centimeters so it is a really boxy flowy fit. This pattern is also knit from the top down. You're going to knit the back portion of your garment first then pick up and connect the front two pieces connect those in the round at the underarm and work all the way down on the rest of the garment. Like I said, there is an option to add sleeves to this one and those sleeves would be set in sleeves if you added them. Otherwise, you can just omit those entirely and have a beautiful tank. If you're doing either the tank or the tee version, you finish off all of the edges of this garment with really cute bubble details and those are made with a crochet hook. So if that's something that you're not familiar with, there is information in the pattern obviously <laughs> on how to do that. It shouldn't be terribly hard. If you're concerned about the crochet aspect of it, you could just omit those and finish everything off with an I-cord. I'm not sure if information is included for that in the pattern. That's more of just a me aside, but I do think what makes this garment really unique is those bubble details on the edges, so I would definitely be brave and try them. It's crochet isn't hard. Crochet is actually what I started with before I became a knitter. 
total aside, but crochet is quite relatively easy and I think you can do it. Along with those bubble details, you do also have a really beautiful round lace motif that runs along the bottom of the tank. And if you're doing the T version, it is also on the bottom of the sleeves as well. The Sunset Camisole by Sari Nordlin reminds me a lot of the peplum tops that I wore in like junior high, high school, but in a totally different way as the ruffle runs uh, diagonally across the front. I think it's a really cute feminine tank and a great way as well to use up a couple skeins of sport weight yarn. So yes, this pattern is knit out of sport weight with a gauge of 21 stitches by 31 rows. You are looking at nine sizes for this pattern with a bust measurement of anywhere from 29.5 to 61 inches or 74.5 to 155 centimeters. Ease-wise, this pattern does say that you want about zero inches, zero centimeters of ease. A little bit of negative ease is also welcome as well, but nothing too crazy, maybe a centimeter or like half an inch. Construction-wise, you are going to work this one from the top down as well. It's another seamless garment. You're going to work on the front and back triangles and then connect all of those together in the round and work all the way down the body. It does have a double folded hem on it, so that's going to give the hem of your garment a little bit of weight and help that hold itself in place nicely, help your garment hold its shape as well. And then you pick up stitches along the front of the garment to place your little diagonal frill. So that frill is added on after you have knit the whole body. There is a note on this pattern as well saying that it is suited for cotton or linen blend yarns, stuff that's going to have a lot of drape and movement to it, so that's something to keep in mind as well. The Queen's Cami by Tori Yu is definitely one of those ones that's on the top of my list to knit. To be honest, I was very excited about this pattern last summer, didn't end up having time to knit it, forgot about it, and then when I was pulling patterns for this video I saw it again and I was like, oh my goodness, I still love that as much as I did last year. So I definitely think I have to make the time to knit this one this year. This is a fingering weight garment with a gauge of 22 stitches by 30 rows, so a little bit looser and drapier of a gauge. I do remember reading though on the pattern that this garment uses two different gauges in it to achieve the really pretty flowy look at the bottom that it has. So keep that in mind. You might have to do a couple different gauge swatches to figure out those two different gauges that you need to use in the pattern. But I think the finished look of this garment is totally worth the extra little bit of effort. The Queen's Cami pattern does come with nine different sizes. You are looking at a bust circumference of anywhere from 28 to 60 inches or 71 to 152 centimeters. Ease-wise, this does call for negative ease around the bust, about two to four inches or five to 10 centimeters of negative ease. And choosing your size this way will give you that really cute fitted top with the flowy bottom to it that you're seeing in the photos. Construction-wise, this is worked from the top down like most of the other garments in this video. It seems to be a pretty often called for type of construction for tanks. And that beautiful fitted shape has the option to either have a flowy hem at the bottom that is straight all the way around, or you can do a curved hem as well that's going to give you a little bit of extra length in the back, which I think is a really beautiful detail and probably what I would do. That seems to be my preference with tops. I really like that little bit of extra length in the back and it makes it so much more fun to do like a little French tuck or something as well into a pair of shorts or you can leave it out and you're still getting that French tuck look without doing the tuck. So I really love that option that's included. Something else she did note on the pattern page that I really appreciate is that first of all, the V-neck in the front is quite modest. Obviously that's a personal preference thing, but I do appreciate that as a bustier girl. And then as well, it does state that you're going to have full bra strap coverage in this tank, which I also appreciate. I hate, not, not that I care if my bra strap is showing, but I hate putting so much work into a beautiful tank and then putting it on and having the bra strap showing and I feel like it ruins the whole look of the outfit. So. I appreciate that she noted that as well on the pattern page. Next we have the CP04 polo shirt, which is a pattern by Mini Me Knit Design. And this is like a polo type tank top, something really unique. I 
didn't see anything else like this when I was looking through patterns on Ravelry, so I thought it was really worth including. This one is knit out of fingering weight help doubles, so you could do that, or you could just pick a DK weight yarn. It's going to give you a DK weight gauge, and the gauge for this one is 24 stitches by 29 rows. Sizes for this one, there are 10 different sizes with a bust circumference of 30 inches to 66 inches or 76 to 167.5 centimeters. You're looking at anywhere from 0 to 4.25 inches of positive ease or about 0 to 11 centimeters of positive ease for this one. So there is a relatively wide range of ease options depending on what you want to do for fit. And construction wise, this has worked seamlessly from the top down as well. So your shoulders are shaped with increases, then you move it down into the neckline, which is shaped with short rows, and then you work down the whole ribbed body, finishing everything off with the ribbing and a nice clean bind off. So yeah, just a really classic polo type fit that's changed up a little bit into a tank. Really nice for the spring and summer. I do remember reading on the pattern page as well that it looks like there are double knit edges around the collar on this, but they're not double knit. So if you are not a double knitting type person, you don't have to worry about that. There's no double knitting in this pattern at all. So Though, again, I will say, double knitting, totally worth it. I learned how to double knit last summer, and I love it. The finishing is so sleek and beautiful. But if you're not a double knit type person, you don't have to worry about doing it in this polo. In the pattern photos, this is styled with a skirt, which I think is beautiful, but I think it would also look great over top of a dress or with a really cute tailored pair of shorts for like a night out for dinner or something just a little bit more classy than the other flowy casual type tanks we've been looking at today. The Pillars Tank by Claire Jackson is also beautiful. This one pulls in a lot of that really long thick ribbing that I've seen in a lot of patterns in the past year or so. This one is knit out of DK weight yarn with a gauge of 20 stitches by 26 rows and this one has a whopping 20 sizes available. There is a size for like I think every two inches in the pattern. Yeah, it goes from 28 to 30 to 32 to 34, that's inches. But anyways, so many different size options in this pattern, which is amazing. You're looking at anywhere from 28 to 66 inches or 71 to 167.5 centimeters bust circumference. So this pattern is going to be great for basically anyone. Ease-wise, you're looking at anywhere from 0 to 10% negative ease. This one doesn't give a specific number, like measurement-wise, but you're going to have to do a little bit of math to figure out what size to pick. So if I say, for example, have a 40-inch bust, let's see, I would do the math. So 40 times 0.1 so I'm going to take about four inches off of my bust measurement. So that's going to give me the size 36 inch bust measurement. That's what I would knit if that was my bust size. I hope that makes sense. But I kind of like that in a way. It's, I guess you have to do a little bit of math, but it's a little bit more precise. So depends on what you think, but that is how the ease would work on that one, hopefully. I explained that well. Construction wise, this one is worked from the top down. You're going to work on the back portion and then the front portion, connect those under the arms and work in the round down. It's literally, I think, how every tank is worked top down. <laughs> but you do have a couple different options of how you can do your front and back on this one. So four different options, in fact. You can do, I'm gonna have to look at my notes for this one because there's no way I can remember all of this, a lower V in the front with a high back. You can do a higher V in the front and a high V in the back as well. You can do the low V on both the front and the back, or you can do the high V on both the front and the back. So basically everything is interchangeable and you can make it work however you so desire to have that tank fit you. So if you want to have two low V's, really cute. I would totally forget which was the front and the back. I guess it wouldn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, you can do whatever you want with this one and really customize it to your style. And like I said, this has that really thick 
ribbed detail on it. This is two by two ribbing and it's basically, it starts right under your bust and the whole rest of the tank is ribbed, which I think is really cute. The Ananka by Audrey Borrego is a really cute tank that I think would look beautiful over top of dresses or if you're into crop tops, it would be a very cute crop as well. It's definitely a shorter lined tank top, like shorter body length tank top, but of course you could customize that to your liking. This one is knit out of fingering weight yarn with a gauge of 27.5 stitches by 38 rows. And you're looking at 10 different sizes for this one, anywhere from 30 to 62 and a half inches or 76 to 159 centimeters. Ease wise, you want anywhere from negative four inches to positive three quarter inches in ease or negative 10 to positive two centimeters in ease. So there is a wide range of different fits you can do with this one, depending on what your preference is. I do believe if you want it to fit quite similarly to the pattern, let me scroll down here. Yes, it does tell you what the model of the garment is wearing. So she is wearing a size three on a 36 and a quarter bust. So let's see, I don't want to do the math, <laughs> but that'll give you an idea kind of how that fits the model and you can choose your size accordingly. This one is worked from the bottom up as opposed to I think every other pattern we've talked about in this video. So you're going to cast on in the round at the bottom, work all the way up and then split for your little like curved V that's in the front and the back of the garment. The neck is finished with a really clean I-cord detail. There's also options to put bust starts into this pattern if that is something you feel like you need. That's included in the pattern instructions and it's also charted and fully written. So that lace detail that runs around the bottom of the garment is all fully charted for you if that's something you're interested in. I always love reading the details that the designers put on the pattern as well. I feel like they've put so much thought into it. So this one describes the garment as a graphic chevron ribbed hem with v-neck shaping and fine straps, which I think is a really great way to describe this garment. I do also appreciate, I must say, with those fine straps that they're not too long. I feel like sometimes with really long fine straps on a tank, they tend to stretch out. Now you could sew some elastic in them to prevent this, but I appreciate that they're a little bit shorter because that leaves even less room for them to stretch out. So we're down to our final two garments. And like I said, we're visiting Simone Ryan again in this video. This here is the Lines Summer Top by Simone Ryan. It is a Aran weight garment, so it's going to knit up very fast, which is very nice. And it has a gauge of 18 stitches by 23 rows. There are eight different sizes in this pattern, anywhere from 29.5 inches to 51 inches or 75 to 130 centimeters. You're going to want anywhere from zero to two inches or zero to five centimeters of positive ease for this tank and it is worked from the top to the bottom. You have a couple different options for the neckline on this one. You can either do a straight up v-neck or you can have a curved neck option as well that sits a tiny bit higher on your chest. The only downside to this pattern is it doesn't have anything other than like charts and instructions of what to do. So if you're not proficient in reading charts, there's not going to be written out instructions for those charted portions of the pattern. Now charts are very easy to read. I feel like I say this every time I talk about them. If you're feeling a little bit brave and you want to try a chart, I promise you it's the easiest thing ever. There are so many videos on YouTube on how to read a chart and once you pick it up you're going to be so shocked at how easy it is and wondering why you were so scared of them for so long. And I say this because that was me <laughs> for a very long time. So if you're nervous about charts, I wouldn't worry too much, especially with a pattern like this where it's a very simple motif. It's not crazy lace, it's not crazy cables. All it is is a really simple geometric pattern that's v-shaped and you create that using cross stitches, so simple tiny little cables that you don't even need a cable needle for. The fit of this one, again, very cute, very classy. It's a little boxy and I think you could adjust the length of this one quite easily as well. The models seem to be wearing a more cropped version, but if you want it a little bit longer, you could easily add just a little bit more length to the body. Our final pattern of this tank and camisole roundup is the Crescendo Camisole by the Knit Pearl Girl. This one almost has 
like a halter top shape to it, but not, it's not a halter top. You're not tying it around your neck in the back. I'm not sure what exactly this is called. Let me know in the comments if you know, but it has a very like pulled in line to it at the top. And then there's a really cute keyhole detail included in the back as well. The Crescendo Camisole is a DK weight garment knit with a gauge of 20 stitches by 32 rows. And you're looking at 12 different size options, anywhere from 30 inches to 59 inches in the bust or 77 to 150 centimeters in the bust. And ease wise, the ease on this is slightly complicated, but not really. It's just ever so different depending on which size you're going to be knitting. So if you're knitting the sizes A through H, you want anywhere from negative one inch to positive one inch or negative 2.5 centimeters to positive 2.5 centimeters in ease. And then if you're knitting the sizes I through L, that jumps up to two inches negative to two inches positive ease or five centimeters negative to five centimeters positive ease. So that is definitely something to keep in mind depending on the size you knit, the ease that is called for is going to be different. Construction wise, you work the front panel first, then the back, and then you connect them in the round to work the rest of the body. And your straps are actually the last thing that you do on the garment. And you can choose to do either an I-cord strap or a double knit strap that's going to be a little bit thicker and a little bit sturdier. There's also optional bust and waist shaping in this pattern. So if that's something that you're interested in, this pattern is going to be great for you. I really love the lace on the front of this one. And like I said, the keyhole in the back, I think is really cute and classic. I don't think it's closed with a button. I do think there's just a little I-cord strand that runs between the keyhole, but that honestly makes it simpler. You don't have to go out and find a button and you don't have to worry about keeping it button shut. So there you have it. There is my top 10 tanks and camisoles for this spring and summer knitting that is coming up so quickly. I hope you found something that you love. If you have any questions about any of the patterns that I talked about today, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. If you have a suggestion or a request for another pattern roundup video that you would like to see, anything else, anything video wise that you would like to see, I do have a Google form in the description of this video. Feel free to leave any of your suggestions for videos there and I will definitely consider them. I look through that quite often and it's really nice to get some inspiration from all of you, kind of see what you're interested in hearing about. It helps me out a lot because sometimes it's hard to come up with videos every week. So yeah, if you have something that you would love to see me talk about, leave that in that Google form. I'd really appreciate it. If you have any tank patterns that you would love to share with everyone, you can leave those down in the comments as well. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next week for a regular podcast episode. Bye!